John, can you tell us about Shearline from the start? So Shearline was founded in 1973 by David Littlechild, who happens to be my uncle. Um, it was founded on the back of the Cambridge phenomenon and all the tech and science industries which were coming out of Cambridge University at that time and still are. Um, it moved from Milton near Cambridge to its present premises in Ely in 1993 to the building we're now in. Um, and since then we've expanded the building three times to its current 60,000 square metre size. We have a machine shop which is thoroughly appointed with uh, milling of three, four and five axis machines. We've also got turning, again, single twin spindle machines, um, mostly with bar feeds, sliding head turning as well. Um, and allied to that, we have a number of other processes, the finishing processes such as rumbling, bead blasting, um, aqueous washing of components. And then the other major area which we have is a fabrication and sheet metal workshop which is capable of turning out precision sheet metal work via our laser and uh, punching machines. Uh, do the, do the, all these services complement each other? Yes, often we'll find that we'll have a customer who has machining needs who didn't realise we had a fabrication and sheet metal shop and there are often then uh, requirements which we can fulfil within that area. Conversely, have a lot of sheet metal customers who didn't realise we had a machine shop and you know we can pick up work there too. So here at Shearline I'm responsible for account management and customer service. The customer service at Shearline is something I'm very proud of. It's something we've been building up over the last few years. Each customer gets their own dedicated account manager and there's three of us in the team. So that's anything from the initial inquiry all the way through to delivering the parts. Now you're quite well known for the diversification within the business and what I might mean by that is all the different sectors that you actually service. Is that quite difficult to manage? Um, it makes it certainly very interesting. Um, like we mentioned, we service a range of industries from medical, scientific, aerospace. Um, each customer, at the end of the day, wants quality parts on time. So that's our main, main goal. One of the things that we've worked very hard to do is to make sure we're over as many different areas of industry as possible so that we have you know, a good coverage and the capabilities within the facility to facilitate these different industries, what do they entail? So we've got the machine shop, we've got a fabrication sector and also our electro-mechanical assembly area which is upstairs. I'm the workshop manager so basically I work from production in so we, we get the information down from the sales team and I'm told that we need X amount of jobs done by this amount so it's my turn. I've got six different sections here ranging from obviously turning, slide, bar, chuck, horizontal, vertical, five axis and it's predominantly my job to make sure all the jobs run smoothly through the factory to uh, the best of their abilities. And, and how do you actually do that? How has this company become successful with the incorporation? I, I think now, we've, we've, the one thing we've, we've got in place now, we've got an MD who's, who's really good at allowing his team to work and do their job properly without too much interference. So everyone we've got here, we've, it's taken some time, but we've got a very, very good team around us. So right from the production, the planning side of it, to me, to the guys we've got working on the shop floor, it all just works smooth as silk now. A business is nothing without its staff. If we, you know, the staff we have here make the business. Um, we firmly believe in bringing apprentices on every year. We always take four uh, into this business the majority of which are retained within the business and you've already met Tom Bisco earlier on, he's one of our apprentices. What about investment in plant? Quite a lot goes on here, doesn't it? Yes, that is the other you know, key, key selling point to Shearline, that we need to invest in machinery to remain competitive. We see things labelled around the machine shop like manufacturing your future, pride, passion and profit. What, what are your beliefs as a business here? What is in the DNA? So we need to provide the customer with what they need at the appropriate quality level that they require. Um, quite clearly things need to be delivered on time. Customer service is extremely important to us as well as delivering a quality product. We work out, if we can work lights out, we'll work lights out. If we can run two machines at a time, we can work two machines at a time. And it's machines like the Matsu, we've got modern accurate, reliable machines with good swarf evacuation that you can leave running whilst those guys, those top end guys, are working on other machines. So, Do you think this is a big reason customers keep coming back to you? 
Yeah, yeah, I, I do. I think we've we, we've Shearline as a whole is a one-stop shop, so we offer many different facets to the company, not just the machine inside of it, which a lot of our customers, where they before they were having to go to three, four different companies to get their machining done, then their plating or painting or assembly, or we can do it as a one-stop shop. Really, I think we've got a very good reputation throughout Cambridgeshire and far beyond there, to be honest with you. So. I have to say, um, with this COVID crisis, uh, things are interesting, shall we say. Uh, trade is definitely down. Um, we're seeing nearly across all of our customer base, orders are fewer than we were used to. Um, it's certainly ruined my budget for this year. But nevertheless, I foresee British manufacturing springing back from this relatively quickly. So my, my hopes for the future are still very, very bright. <laughs>